What's up guys, this is Drake and welcome back to another video. And today we're going in depth with the new DZO Film Tango zoom lenses. All right, so if you don't know what these are, these are the new zoom lenses from DZO Film. So you have the 65 to 280 and you have the 18 to 90. Those are the two flavors that they offer. This is T2.9, T2.8. So really fast lenses and the price is pretty great. So let's talk about the build quality. So these are both full metal lenses, a uh, great big front element there, lets in a lot of light. Uh, they look fantastic. They are quite heavy. This bad boy here comes in at about 8.7 pounds and this comes in at about 7.7 .7 pounds. So the comparisons are the Canon 25 to 250 or 17 to 120 are about 6.7, 6.4 pounds. And so these are almost up to two pounds heavier uh, without the servos on them. So that's just something to think about. They are heavy, but obviously this kind of lens you're gonna put on a tripod anyways. I've still run this handheld, but it's just something to think about when you're uh, comparing lenses is how much they weigh. Uh, lots of mounting points for like your lens support here. And it has the optional mounting points for the servo that can go on the side. And we'll kind of get into the servo a little bit later. Uh, the other thing to talk about is the mount. This is EF, but also comes with an interchangeable PL. So you can use it on like your red Komodo or your Sony Venice, it kind of covers a wide variety of cameras. And then obviously you have your back focus. Um, it's got your rings for uh, control, so you can add motors like you can here or the servo on the iris, the zoom and the focus. So that's quite nice. So what makes these lenses special? Well, first off, the zoom range. There's not a lot of lenses that cover this amount of zoom. So you got the 65 to 280. It's kind of for your big tight shots at 2.9, which is pretty nice. And then obviously this is your 18 to 90, so it's your nice wide, too tight lens. I use this on things like cable cams or dogs, that kind of thing. But it's a good everyday focal length that you can kind of use for everything. The other thing that makes it special is the servo option that Movecam is making. So when they announced these lenses, they announced it with the servo option. DZO doesn't make the servo, Movecam does. And they also make the servo for Andrew New. The thing that's unfortunate is as of today shooting this video, I can't find that server anywhere. And when I talked to Move Cam, I reached out to them on Instagram. They said, it'll be shipping when the lenses ship. Well, these lenses are shipping now and that servo still isn't shipping. So that's kind of a bummer. And I kept asking them, bugging them about it and they just stopped responding to me. So it's a bummer I haven't been able to test it, but they did confirm that it will take the Canon or Fuji uh, ENG controller. So. If you don't know what I'm talking about, usually broadcast lenses have your zoom and focus controller down here on your pan bars. So you can control your zoom and focus here and it makes it really, really nice for operating. And if you're trying to do what I'm doing, which is integrate cinema and broadcast together, having those controllers really, really helps. So the Canon 25 to 250 or 17 to 120, any of those lenses, they have those controllers. That's a good blend of cinema and broadcast. And this is supposed to be able to offer the same thing. It's just a bummer that I don't have the servo and I haven't been able to test it, but that's going to be a big deal if you're trying to enter into that broadcast ecosystem with cinema lenses. So that's kind of why these lenses are actually really special is that built-in servo. So as of now, don't know anything about it. If I hear more information, I'm sure I will let you guys know and make another video about it, but there's other options. So. I have the Tilta Nucleus Nano 2 motors with the controller. You can also mount on the pan bar. You have your zoom and focus control. So there is options. You can use RT Motion. There's other different brands out there that you could use to kind of do the same thing. It's just nice to have it all, you know, packaged as one. So using it in the wild, I got to use these on a couple shoots. One was like a very specific concert film. The other one was just a conference where we had some music and some speaking. Obviously this was our tight follow shot and we use this several different positions. I'll throw a bunch of test footage in here so you guys can see, but we used it handheld on stage. We used it in the pit handheld. We used it in the pit on a tripod. Um, I've also put it on a gimbal or a dolly uh, and it would be sick on a cable cam as well to be able to get that super wide overview shot and then zoom 
weigh in. So that's kind of what this lens is good for. And I'll throw a bunch of those clips in here. Uh, the image quality is fantastic. Uh, they're very, very sharp. They look really, really nice. They look like modern cinema glass, what you'd be expecting. This guy here has some fun characteristics. Um, on all the way wide open at 18 millimeters on kind of on the outside, the bokeh gets a little swirly, which actually is kind of fun. It kind of merges the vintage, you know, lens thing with the modern sharpness that you would get. So I personally like that. If you're looking for a super, super clean wide that doesn't kind of get swirly on the edges, and I'll try to show that in some example videos, this lens probably isn't for you, but personally it adds some characteristics that I kind of like. So that's just something to note about this guy. They both flare quite nice. It's actually a really pleasing flare. So if you're into capturing that, it looks nice. Usually I'm a Canon guy when it comes to flares, but these actually kind of compete. They look pretty good on the flares. In a real world application, this would kind of be my go-to. If I was just a cinematographer shooting stuff every day and not really doing the concert films, I might not pick this guy up. I might stick with one or two of these guys because you have your wide and you have your tight so you can do gimbals, cable cams, dollies, handhelds, tripods, interviews, music videos. This is kind of your everyday daily driver cinema lens. At least that's how I would use this lens. The nice thing is because I do do the concert films and I need that longer focal length, I have something to pair it with. So I can pair it with this guy and have those far away tight shots that I actually have to have. So having the pair is really nice. Again, if I wasn't shooting concert films like I do, I'd probably stick with just this guy. But if you're trying to do broadcasts or concert films or anything like that, where you're shooting music and you have to be far away and you need that tight shot, having this pair is really fantastic. And then I also mix it with some other DZO lenses like their 14 to 30 that I'll put on a handheld or I'll put that on a cable cam, something like that. So it's a nice mix of lenses that they have to offer. So price point, I mentioned it earlier, but you're probably wondering what do these cost? Uh, so this guy costs about $11,000 without the servo. Now I'm guessing the servo is gonna cost 11 to 12 grand, just looking at the engineer servo that Movcam also makes. So what does this compare to? Uh, the Canon 25 to 250 comes in about $32,000 and the new Fuji 24 to 300 comes in about $35,000. So those both come with servos. I don't think that price includes the lens controllers. So as you can see, this is about a third the cost of those lenses even if you bought the servo with it. Now this guy right here comes in at about $8,600, again without the servo, and the competitors would be like the Canon 17 to 120, which is about $22,000, or the Fuji has the 20 to 120, which is 13 grand, but it is 3.5 and not 2.8, so it is a slower lens. They also make the 19 to 90, which comes in about $30,000. So that's kind of the comparison with the lenses and ecosystems that I've lived in. I know that there's other lenses out there I don't know as well. So this, you know, comparing to Canon and Fuji, that's just the ecosystems that I've always lived in for doing this kind of work. So overall, I think it comes down to cost, like the image quality that you're getting for the cost that you're getting. And if you add the servo, it's kind of a big deal. You're gonna spend a third the price to have a lens with these focal ranges, which aren't quite as big as the competitors, but still really great. And the servo option, that's kind of like the best bang for your buck that you're getting out of these. You're getting sharp, cinematic quality glass with servos. That's what makes these a really big deal and kind of why I think they're, they're gonna take off here doing what we're doing, which is all these cinematic broadcasts. So if you're looking for something like this, this is definitely something to look into. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Do you own one of these? Are you using it every day? Uh, or are you looking at buying them? Do you have questions? I'd love to hear your thoughts or questions. Leave it down in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you are subscribed, thank you so much. It really helps with making these kinds of videos. And I'll see you in the next one.